okay so i think most of people are uh, familiar with dms correct uh, dms stand for document management system and uh, logilite ha has uh, developed a dms plugin that is uh, like inbuilt uh, work like uh, it's not dependent on the integrations with the third party dms system but it can work inside idempier so today's presentation what i am going to cover is like what is new features that we have added into dms and uh, uh may so uh case study like uh, how extensively one of our implementation using uh, dms so sorry i can't uh, read here so how to manage the other screen okay so the one i have the list of the features that uh, i can uh, talk in this order like a dms substitute is like uh, originally we have developed a dms is like uh, you can associate uh, a content with a record okay and it's work like a uh, other way of uh, attachment correct to a record so it's an alternative to attachment but then what we found is like sometimes like we have a provision for linking like uh, a same content can be linked to the multiple records so we don't have to duplicate and it's visible everywhere but sometimes what happen like uh, even the linking is a manual work correct so to avoid uh, we made a, a dms substitute that is like uh, for example we have a, a, a contact and a business partner correct so if i am adding to the adding content to any of the contact it should be visible on a business partner and similarly if uh, any content is added to a business partner it should be visible on contact correct so if there is such a relationship and we want to establish like the content added is uh, in a one record is actually visible on a, a related record that is done by dms substitute so think okay so how dms substitute work is like uh, we have uh, given a uh, configurations okay here it shows like a uh, uh, user e table is substituted to the business partner and it's linked by the business partner uh, id column so if i configure any like for example if i want to show the all the purchase order attached to the uh, business partner instead of my invoice and i am able to see all the attachment of uh, a purchase order correct on a sales uh, purchase invoice is going to directly on business partner window correct i can add a similar substitute by saying that okay c underscore invoice okay so that how i can configure like uh, auto linking of this content correct and uh, i will give you a example like uh, for example we have configured like a business partner <coughs> if i upload any document here uh, i would like to hold on, i okay so here uh, let's say that there is no content at, at all on a business partner right now okay and uh, if i upload to the a uh, contact correct and uh, we'll see like how it uh,
okay so i have the content visible here and if i go to the business partner records and i take look okay same content available in business partner also so this means what is like dms is actually managing space for every records correct and what it doing now is sharing the space so if you are saying that uh, a contact tables and business partner are having the same same uh, uh, location where you have to say uh, uh, upload the content then it's upload into the shared space it's not separate out by the two different tables okay so dms substitute and then we have a, a multi document uploads so sometimes what happen like a same content type we have to have uh, attach multiple records so earlier what happen is like uh, we have to repeat the same step like providing uh, metadata and uh, a content multiple times so what we have added is like a multi per content upload and how it work is like a uh, when we are uploading content i can select multiple files okay and it's it's uh, populate all and i can apply the same uh, content type and it's done okay so this is multiple uh, document upload okay document content search so yeah one question and the track and drop is already implemented uh drag and drop is not there yet but we implemented it on the other show why not on the other show we have a, a different challenge like the drop window correct uh even in attachment correct the previewer is not able to take the uh drop so we have attached in, uh, we have provided in a frame so if you even drag and drop correct in all the places it will not show the drop, uh, drop uh, icon only at certain places only it show you a drop icon so there is a challenge and i think uh, that is in our wish list uh, okay so document content search what is this is actually uh, originally when i think originally what happening is like uh, it can be searched by a metadata only correct but now the dms itself can extract the uh, content from a document whatever you are uploading and it index it and you can you you may have a generic search or uh, any word inside your document it can be written so for example uh, i will go to the base window and i okay from here uh, i go and search for a uh, let's say so i i i don't have any file named with onion but if i search okay it return story one because inside a content there is a word onions correct so it it actually in index the content of a document and it can index like a word document excel document pdf uh Can it do uh, OCR yet? Sorry. Does it do OCR? Uh, not OCR. It's uh, uh, if it is a text content only, then it's uh, uh, index. Which index can be held in this? Solar. Yeah. Uh, so again, DMS in all the part of a DMS is actually uh, like a providers and. Uh, service service implementation so even you can replace the solar by something else everything is a factory uh again the system con uh, this document contents as is system configurable so if you don't want to use it you can disable it so your index may be a smaller but if you want to index the content you can enable it okay dms admin so we have given a, a additional features of dms admin because uh, like uh, like we have a uh, admin features correct in uh, any systems why this is required is like uh, we want to separate out like what uh, advanced user can do and what 
a normal user can do. So what is the DMS enemy? How <coughs> normally DMS enemy work is actually a flag on a roll. So we edit like DMS admin as a flag. So if role has a mark like DMS admin, then that role can actually uh, manage a content, uh, is a power user, and he can uh, actually delete, uh, re-archive. So what DMS uh, admin can do the extra is like uh, DMS admin has a all content access. So we are going to look at the access uh, features next. So like uh, where we are restricting the access to the content by a permissions so dms admin is normally own is a, a, each and every content is accessible to the admin second thing is a uh, owners he can change the owners so if contents normally content owner is actually managing the who can seek the content who can uh, delete the content who can write the content but the dms admin can override and he can go and change the owners also uh, then he can continue uh, delete. Uh, he can see the deleted content. So any content del uh, deleted in a DMS is actually soft delete. So what happened actually? Whenever somebody deleted, it actually archive, not deleted. Okay, and uh, the admin can only go and uh, delete or recover. So the content, the normal user has no rights once it is uploaded to remove the content from a system. Uh, we have a role, so <coughs> it may be a role based or user based permission. Yeah, but the, the content can belong to role. Yes. So like source documents. Mm -hmm. okay. So access control now again access control correct as I mentioned correct each and every part of DMS is uh, like uh, 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 not uh, hard coded. It's like extendable. So similarly access control also is. Uh, same way it extend, extendable so out of box what we are supporting is like a same access control like a, a windows file system provide so it's model in same way so I, I will I will give a demo how it works so for example we oh, many of you know correct that we can create a in DMS we can create a folders I think this may not be accepted. I will write. <laughs> okay. And then I can upload some content here. Okay. I name as a Deepak personal, but I did as a super user. Now, if I go logout, <coughs> I can't see any content because I don't have permission. Okay, uh, actually the upload was done by super user. So super user is a owner, super user has only permission to ex, uh, see this content, correct? So what I have to do actually to grant the uh, access, I need to go again. Okay, if I grant access to a directory, enter the hierarchy, all the subfolder and every content get the same permission. So it derives the same permission and 
it's not like mandatory sorry it's option correct so it asks like do you want to grant same permission recursively or uh, just to a particular directory but like uh, if if i go inside a directory and i give a permission to a particular uh, uh, a content so for example deepak's personal correct i if i am not granting to the deepak's personal folder i am giving to the one one content then the all the parent directory get the navigational access so navigational access is like it cannot be modified uh, but it can be navigated so we have a access name navigation so in a permission we have a read write delete navigation and you can grant uh, access to a role or a user and super user can means uh, dms admin can change the owner also so for example i give a uh, access okay uh so when I, i was reading it has asked question so yeah it was quite fast so i uh uh you may have noticed but let let me give another permission when i say okay it is asked will you grant same permission for the child content documents i say yes then it will recursively apply if i say no then only the current directory got this permission okay now i i can see a, a directory and contain inside because i i have granted only the permission to uh, this directory again this uh, uh, role role based access control is system configurable so if you want to you don't want to add additional uh, performance overhead of uh, permission check correct you can actually disable it but if you want you can enable it okay uh the other features we added is like a delete and recovery and detail view this is the delete and recovery is for available only for uh, dms admin so uh if i looking as a deepak if i look the content here i don't have a way to see the deleted content okay so for example i have permission here i can go and delete this content now i am logging as a dms admin so i can't see this content here it is deleted correct but i have a option here to view the deleted only content so deleted content visible i can choose to show all the content and it will display all the content if there is a deleted content it will show mark as a red color title so we can differentiate that it is it is actually a deleted by user now if i want to recover correct i can click and say that on archive okay and it's now getting visible to the normal user so this is delete and archive a uh, second thing like a uh, uh, a view correct so we have now detail view also 
so sometimes we want to sort or uh, want to see the uh, metadata correct we have a detail view and we have a, a thumbnail view okay so i think the what we have done newly is covered and this is a wish list i think uh, one thing like what norbert say i need to add here but uh, one is like category wise access so current many times what uh, happens is like uh, this is in our wish list we have not developed it yeah okay i, I will be quick so uh, category is like a uh, Content category wise access so that uh, we don't have to give up uh, directory wise or we don't have to go and uh, give uh, access on uh, every places. Correct. So just uh, we have a few category and we can give uh, access by category. Tags is like what no but idea to take the content by using the uh, uh, tags whatever he has it and work workflow support. So like whenever a content uploaded uh, based on the content type uh, kind of workflow trigger and it's go through the complete flow of. Uh, <coughs> Uh, process and then we have a final document okay so done and uh, yeah what kind of timeline are you looking at on the, the wish list items uh, there is no timeline because as per the requirement correct and uh, uh, is coming we may develop so I think you guys did develop tags for us tags yeah, yeah. you can uh, uh, you already did it for us already mm. in the yeah. no no we have tags. But uh, we not, okay. But we are supporting from 7.1, correct? So, so when we are talking about tags, we have to migrate to the 10. Then only tags are available. Got it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but we can pull actually the your changes into the 7.1 and add support throughout. Do not make another tag system. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> Okay, so one of the our implementation which are heavily using DMS, so it is a pattern like we make a go live in January 17 for with DMS, and you see the increase in the into the per month uploads, a content upload, and currently it is like uh, every month we have around three lakhs and three th three hundred and forty thousand content are getting uploaded monthly. <coughs> And so this is what currently our DMS managing and thanks Nobles for improving the performance of our, of our query. Okay. There is uh, Amazon S3? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, S3 bucket. So depends. Uh, uh, it depends on the implementation like where they want to store. But we prefer S3 bucket. Uh, it's it's not require anything else just mounting a directory as a as a drive and you can upload you can put all the content into s3 bucket okay, the last time that i was trying to test i remember that this is part of your distribution of items mm -hmm. so i just want to verify what are your plans to deliver this is already already public and uh, we have we have make it uh, master branch compatible so from IDP 10 version, it is compatible. Perfect. So mm -hmm. is that already available? Yeah, already available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So finally, we can test this on independent. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, let me just, I, I think I can share a link later because we are already getting late. Correct? So after lunch. Yeah, you can continue. Yeah, yeah. So I will share a, a URL, correct, from where you can look for the source code. We still we want uh, uh, set the build building uh, deploy, uh, build system correct so it's binary is not available directly but, no problem, but, but source code is available yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks So, any other question regarding DMS? <laughs> so, there was one question like uh, how actually if a uh, Word document or uh, access it will preview or not correct. So, I think I can show a demo.
So you can see that uh, uh, I uploaded a Word, Word document and when I double click on it, it open in preview window and it's converted in a like uh, read only PDF. So we don't have a like concurrent editing but uh, we can have at least preview for any Word or Excel document. Okay, so if there is no other question, I think uh, we can go. Deepak, just one question. Can I control the size of upload? Yes, it is system configurable. So by default, is around 3 MB? No, uh, each upload. Let's say I have three uh, categorizations for upload. No, it's only single configurable uh, dot, uh, <coughs> limit. So you can either, you can specify maximum okay. upload limit. That, that, that's for the entire. Uh, Entire system. That's what they're telling you. Yes. It's crazy idea, but it's more of a question. Technically, we can upload HTML. Mm -hmm. Probably, we can upload Markdown. Mm -hmm. We can create Markdown renderer. Mm -hmm. Because the alpha scope was very interesting on the feature. The CMS like make websites is always about the uh, like free free structure, not uh, exactly like um, database system like Windows. Yes? Mm -hmm. And what they are uh, implement, you were able to create a folder structure. Mm -hmm. You add metadata labels, uh, and you create uh, HTML on Markdown. Mm -hmm. And uh, to the server, they are. Uh, make a preview and you have a website. Mm -hmm. So this is the way how they create a website without creating the CMS system. No, it's not CMS, correct? It <coughs> but, uh, but, uh, but for example, we create a <coughs> website, mm -hmm. a demo website uh, on the IDP and Angular, but uh, we have limitations in background because there is a no CMS model. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it would be interesting if we can do this on the Right. No, it's not uh, possible right now. And second thing, even you can but manage the. the hmm? you can <laughs> it's not designed like that, so <laughs> I can't put it. <laughs> we have we had a CMS. I think we have truncated some tables are already <coughs> present. We are using them. <laughs> I can show. Them. Yeah. <laughs> so you have a solution. We are activated direction. <laughs> okay. 
So, next we are going to talk about uh, single sign-on. So, this features is coming in uh, version 10. Okay, so what I will do, I just first do a demo. It's not uh, major things to like showcase. Uh, I can show like how it works and how it get configured. Okay, so I have another IDP running which has a single sign on enabled. So when I actually try to go to a home page, it redirects me directly to a Microsoft uh, Azure authentication site. Okay, and once it is authenticated, it landed on either role page or a, a dashboard home page. Oh, ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't know how. <laughs> it's, oh, let me change to. Duplicate. Okay. So okay. So I'm browsing to uh, identity home page. Uh, sorry, login page. And as I click it, it it redirects me to the uh, Microsoft portal. And as I authenticate there using my account, it's land into the identity. Uh, this behavior, like currently, it's land into the role panel, but this behavior is configurable. So either you can choose to show the role panel, or you can directly land into the home page. If you, if you go straight to the home page, is there like a payload option that tells you where you want to configure the actual role? Or uh, uh, once you once you go to the home page, uh, home page, correct? Again, you you can see your role and those all things. You can go and change role. No, my question is, so if you if you if you have it configured to bypass the role, mm -hmm. how do you choose your role? Is your uh, uh, last login role? So it's like default role or last login role. So if there is a single role, it it also like bypass you directly without uh, because we have a system configuration so like if you have a single role and single client okay uh, even in normal login also you can directly redirect to home page so again this uh, sso is a system configurable so you can enable or disable now sso can work on everywhere so for example if i go to the osgi console So, yeah, we we don't have any other way because uh, if there are multiple role assigned, correct? Which user want to choose? We don't know. Okay, so I'm not sure why console is not opening, but let me try again. Oh. Oh, 
zero one zero. Okay, so we go to the IDPR monitor, and again it authenticated using uh, single sign-on. Ah, we have trouble. There may be, I think there may be a wrong configuration, so I may check here. So normally, uh, we are currently have a two plugins. So this SSO in a core is actually dependent on plugins. In core, it provide uh, services that can be implemented for any identity provider. So currently, Logilite has developed two plugins. One is for AWS Cognito and Microsoft Azure. So both are available. Uh, okay, so this is URL for Azure plugin. And we have uh, another plugin that is a Cognito plugin. You <laughs> yeah, so Cognito is tested by Carlos, Azure is tested by me. So you may see that I am demo using Azure because I, I want Cognito working. So I configured with uh, uh, Azure only. So how uh, system configuration, uh, in system configuration work is like uh, you have to log in as a system user. So currently we don't support a multi-tenant environment and that's why the configuration is always in system tenant. Okay, so here, this is a, we have a provider, correct, it listed like a, whichever plugin you have deployed in your system, those providers are available and you have to mark whichever, currently whichever uh, uh, identity provider you want to activate, you have to mark as a default and only one can be a default uh, SSO provider. So other all we have a documentation like uh, how to configure so we have a tenant id uh, means how you can retry from uh, azure portal how you configure on azure portal that all we are going to document on wiki so you may find out like how the tenant id uh, application client id you retry from uh, azure portal uh, then this one correct is very important like redirect url if even uh, it is no one correct but whenever we are sending the url it and the whatever is configured need to be common. So if you are going to Azure portal, it will ask like uh, what will be your redirect URL. If you are submitting different URL, you get uh, the error like this one, this kind of error because uh, they think like uh, you don't have a right uh, server where you are redirecting. So same Cognito as well as Azure both report you error if uh, redirection URL do not match. Okay, so any question? So, so still the work the pending. So where does the user land? User land really? in a home page here? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I'm saying you have three applications. Mm -hmm. uh, will you sync with the AD? How will you sync the users? No, this is in Azure Active Directory. So yeah, you so Azure may Azure yeah, Azure Azure. yeah, using Azure ready. So if you are using Microsoft Teams, correct? Right. Or Office 365, okay. then you have a same infrastructure that you are using. So they are managing their credentials and everything. And even you can manage role into ED. So those are- Let's say the HRMS is somewhere else, for mm -hmm. example, the third mm -hmm. party HRMS. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> the user IDs will be created there, roles and definitions will be there. Mm -hmm. so that you will get copied to ADN from there, ADN you will copy the uh, I didn't hear, uh, we, we have a pending thing is a provisioning. Currently it is like a manually configurable. Okay. So we have a two configurations like uh, uh, you can allow login using email ID or username. Okay, so in Active Directory you have both things. Correct. Okay, you have a email ID and username. But how you want to manage your user, either 
by username or email id correct you can choose by system configuration that is In, in this SSO, correct, like it's worked by the authorization token, yeah. correct, yeah, is, is open ID, that is authentication me mechanism, correct, so. No, but I mean, so if, if it's because you made it look, look able, mm -hmm. if, you, if it's possible to write a plugin that this client certificate, provide the user to make it there, or? Oh, need to check, but I, it can be done if, uh, like we are able to retrieve from browser and we are able to validate yeah because sso is like just uh, uh, in core it is a apis correct so whenever you are actually uh, hitting a page correct what it has to do you can call so it's invoke a, a factory correct where it say that okay uh, where you are and so in wiki page correct we have documented how you can write your own uh, plugin so here you can see in single sign on how to implement your plugins so uh, this is like enabling and then uh, system configuration okay and if you have to write your plugins then these are the steps okay and we have a like a I SSO principal factory that you have to implement and uh, we have all the all the API methods are documented here so so here is a, a like developers manual and what you have is actually two plugin as an example so using that you can write any others uh, identity provider support <coughs> No, no. The question was different. I yeah, wanted yeah. to know is that if I change a user profile, like typically what happens is when I have an SSO and then I move my entire user profile to a third party, like an AD or a Microsoft Azure, I need to have the same rules and securities copied to identify. You get to choose. I so you, you can't do that. You don't have to do that. And you, so, because there's, there's authentication and there's authorization. So, what we've shown so far is just the authentication. Yes. So, so, which means that if I change my user profile in Azure, let's say a finance uh, manager becomes a finance head, for example, I need to not only go and change him in AD, then I go and change him again in AD. All his profile. So, so yes. one, you can have some sort of, you can have some sort of, so people have to manage many different systems, I'm sure have different different ways, and part of that probably is some sort of ETL script that goes and propagates changes. Um, there, so, so from a, from a single sign-on standpoint, there's a bunch of different use cases, right? And this is handling authentication. So if you use like Duo, for example, Duo is a Cisco system. Sorry, sir. Because you mentioned the word identity management. So <coughs> identity management has a factor that you have roles, profiles, organizations. That is where I asked the question. It was but not that's the question. Huh? Identity management is related with a more holistic overview of your security. Correct. That's yes. your point. Yes. But single sign-on is just... It's an authorization to enter. Yeah, it's just authentication. Right. Is that you are transferring the yeah. authentication username between different providers, but you are not dealing anything with authorization, with rules, with permissions. That's delegated to your yeah. So then I change again in identity the way I normally change yes. the user. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <coughs> we have a one one thing pending is user provisioning. User provisioning uh, that is uh, in our pending task. So what happen in user provisioning is like whenever new user comes, it assign a default role automatically. So mostly what happen like currently if you are logging with the user uh, with the user correct which is not existing in identity, it give you error like user dot exist. 
correct but once we implement the user provisioning and if anyone implement uh, enable the user provisioning then user will create it with the minimal details and with the default role and then after administrator goes and yeah. assign the proper roles yeah. So like, like in Duo, when you do identity management, you typically you still wouldn't do this. What you would do is Duo provides a dashboard. The dashboard has, <coughs> has a component. That component has the authorization which would include the role. The dashboard would then send a payload to Identifier, and then the login, some sort of login plugin would have to see what role was identified in that, and it would assign it automatically. Uh, to look back that was the question. But that's a, that's a, yeah, it's a different, different level. That's a, So here, uh, instead of identity manager, I I should have told like identity provider. So Azure is identity provider, uh, Cognito is identity provider, correct? Uh, authorization is still managed by IDP. Uh, there is a way like in Active Directory, you can actually manage a role also, correct? But you have to sync it like uh, using Active Directory or LDAP. That was is a different thing, yeah. Okay, so any other question? Yeah. So for me, sing the single sign-on is, is crazy important, but for me, the, the actual users themselves don't care. Mm -hmm. the, single, the single most important, important point for me is because now, because now you have single sign-on, I can now take my URL, I can point it to an AWS load balancer. That AWS load balancer is, is configured to say nobody gets in. No URL, no, no, you can't bang on any, you can't touch the identifier server until you get past uh, the Cognito or the Azure. And then, only then, will the load balancer let you through. And so from a security standpoint, you've now prevented anyone from hacking your server. They can't touch it, they can't see it, they don't know anything about it, nothing. That, to me, is important because when you have 300, when you have 300 <coughs> users, and 150 of them are in trucks out in the field, and you have to maintain those VPN clients, it's a pain in the tail. This, this gives you the ability to have sort of a clientless <coughs> VPN. And for that, it's amazing. Okay, so any other question? Okay, thanks. So, uh, you have anything, Diego? This was a really, this was a hard plugin. I mean, it was probably the most expensive plugin that I've ever been a part of. Good, good, good.